Welcome to this, our film journeys for Benedict Cumberpatch, first broadcast in November 2014. So our first film in the Benedict Cumberpatch film journeys, film number one, Star Trek Into Darkness. And this is probably the film that you knew about but might not have got round to watching. Here's a short clip. Who the hell are you? A remnant of a time long past. Genetically engineered to be superior so as to lead others to peace in a world at war. We were condemned as criminals, forced into exile. For centuries we slept, hoping when we awoke things would be different. But as a result of the destruction of Vulcan, your Starfleet began to aggressively search distant quadrants of space. My ship was found adrift. I alone was revived. I looked up John Harrison. Until a year ago, he didn't exist. John Harrison was a fiction created the moment I was awoken by your Admiral Marcus to help him advance his cause. A smokescreen to conceal my true identity. My name is Khan. Now, I think the fact that Ben plays Khan in this 2013 rerun of the 1982 classic was one of the worst kept movie secrets of that year. Whilst this was an enjoyable romp, switch off your brain, load up your popcorn and enjoy just over two hours of sci-fi fun, it's not a patch on the original. And why would it be the original has the legendary Ricardo Montalban in full throttle baddie mode, complete with 80s rock hand gestures like the apple grab fire maneuver. Really, that's all irrelevant for this film journey. What's important is that this was one of the first big Hollywood roles for Ben. A lot was riding on this one for him. Although he had the backup of an established and critically well-received reboot of the series, a lot of marketing focused on Ben, with the posters and trailers showing him a lot. So for his career, it was a big deal. So our second film in the Benedict Cumberbatch film journey. It's Four Lions from 2010, directed by Chris Morris. Now, the subject matter of this film is not to everyone's taste, but this darkly hilarious British film features a small role for the then still relatively unknown Cumberbatch as a police negotiator. Here's a clip. Wadge, what are your demands? I don't have any. Wadge, why are you doing this? Robert Dingy Rapids. Sorry? Robert Dingy Rapids, bro. Fast track. Now, as this conversation continues to go downhill, it becomes obvious that this is the negotiator's first time on the job. It's a great scene, and Ben takes a step back and allows his character, rightfully so, to take second place to the two brainless terrorists inside. The film is well worth checking out for some great comedy performances, although there's not that much more of Ben to be seen. Before we get to our final film, let's talk about a couple of honourable mentions. Fans of Ben and comedy should check out the BBC Radio 4 series Cabin Pressure, where he plays Captain Martin Kreef, the long-suffering young captain of commercial airline MJN. Also, many of us know and love the BBC's reworking of Sherlock Holmes, starring Ben and Martin Freeman. It's a neat show, very well made and worth a watch if you like zippy whodunits with high production values. And so our final film in this journey, War Horse. Many agree that this is Steven Spielberg back on form. The film, which is based on the Michael Morpurgo novel of the same name, is at times pretty sad viewing, but its lush cinematography and epic scale still hold the attention of even the harshest critic. Cumberbatch plays Major Jimmy Stewart, a man in command of a flying column, leading cavalry charges against the Germans in the First World War. By the time Cumberbatch's character appears on screen, the army have now realised the futility of soldiers on horseback, fighting against machine guns. Although this was a big break for Ben, the weight of the film was not on his shoulders, so he's much more comfortable in the role than, say, Khan in Star Trek. It's obviously also a very different type of character. He's been quoted as saying that hearing he'd got this part was, quote, the most grown-up moment of my life. Before he auditioned, he got a call from his agent saying, Steven Spielberg has run, and he's a fan of Benedict Cumberpatch, which probably isn't a bad call to receive. So, Mr. Spielberg, if you're listening, call me. Okay. One final note for this is about the film's score, which was written by the master, John Williams. Even taken out of context of the visual elements of the film, listening to this score evokes such strong emotions, as do many of Williams' scores. 
Benedict Cumberpatch has been working so hard and many people think his career has suddenly taken off overnight, but he's really been putting the effort in. There are so many roles he's played that many have passed by all but the diehard fans. And that's not to say they're not worth checking out. For example, he's been Smaug, the dragon in the latest Hobbit films. He's also just landed the role of Doctor Strange in the new Marvel film. And he will be the voice of Shere Khan in the Jungle Book reboot in 2016. He was also recently seen in The Imitation Game, a biopic of Alan Turing, the genius who worked on the code-breaking machines of World War II. So his work isn't drying up. Expect to see Benedict Cumberbatch on your big and small screens for quite some time to come. So, have I picked the right three films for this film journeys? You tell us. We want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Get in touch. Tell us what your choices would be. Thanks for watching.